Welcome back to the Scope Podcast. Um, very grateful and lucky to have Laurie Daly, the Indigenous All Stars coach, and I suppose rugby league legend, coming in and uh, doing this podcast with us today, mate. Thanks for having me. No worries at all, Justin. Great to be here. Yep. Um, and well, I just want to tell you a quick story. My uh, one of my first experiences as a fan when I was a kid. Uh, because dad, dad obviously played and you played against my dad uh, when I was younger. My first uh, experience as a fan was watching your 94 grand final, mate. Yeah, oh, really? yeah. So um, this is a pretty cool moment for me to have you in here doing what I'm doing now. Um, you scored that try in the corner. I would have been eight or nine years old. So it's <laughs> a pre- long time ago, yeah, mate. A some long some time good ago. memories that game. Just, you're making me feel old now. <laughs> <laughs> but no, oh, we were lucky when we played with Canberra. We played with such a great team. Yeah. Um, and it was Mal Meninga's last club it game. Was too. For the Canberra Raiders, and we all know the huge figure Mal is in, in rugby league, uh, and he's an immortal. So we were lucky enough to play with him, lucky enough to play with some wonderful players, had a great coach in Tim Sheens, and um, played for a fantastic club. Yeah. And hopefully they'll have some success sooner rather than later. Yeah, they've been thereabouts, haven't they, the last couple of years? Your halves partner at the time, Ricky, he's, he's sort of changed, brought him back into – you know, legit contenders now the last four, three or four years. Yeah, he has. He's really moulded that team and they've been together now for a number of years and he's added little bits where he's needed to, just added the ingredients. And I think they're on the verge of some really good times. Um, unfortunately, last year they lost Josh Hodgson, their co-captain, yep. which was a big blow for them, um, arguably the best hooker in the game um, and controls a lot of play for the Raiders out of dummy half. But having said that, they were only one game away from yeah. the final. They ended up getting getting beaten by the eventual premiers in the Melbourne Storm. So um, while that was hard to take, I still think they're on the rise and, and they're a team that's got plenty of depth and, and they'll be more than competitive this year. Yeah, for sure. I, I was a bit like most people. I put a line through them at the time when they first lost Hojo and then um, the young kid. Who was the young kid that ended up coming on? Tommy Starling. Yeah, Starling played really well yeah. in, in that role and – um, yeah, they surprised a little people. A lot of people getting there all the way to the end there. I think they did, and I think it was off the back of Josh Papali yeah. and, and Jack White. And yeah. Of course, Jack ended up winning the Dally M, but Papali, Papali was just as influential as, as Jack, and they've been consistent now for the Raiders for the next couple of years, and they've elevated themselves to that next level, yeah. uh, the elite level in the game. So while ever you've got a, a leader in the forwards and a leader in the backs um, – Everyone else tends to find their role, but they're the spiritual leaders, if you uh, like, uh, with the Canberra side. Yeah, for sure. And it, it just coincided with Bateman coming back as well. That was a big in for him. He missed the start of the season and up coming back just after that. Yeah, it's would have been nice if they got the whole gang together. They'd yeah, give yeah. it a crack and yeah, yeah. obviously, you know, just having fallen one short to the Roosters the year before. Yeah, there's a lot to go we into winning a premiership um, because you need to be able to um, – Bring everyone together at the at the right time, and you need to make sure that you know you have your best possible players available. Now, you can still win without your best players, but yep. it's much easier if you've got them all there. Uh, unfortunately for the Raiders, they did suffer some injuries at the back end of last year, and just quite couldn't get it done. But with all those blokes being back and available this year, I, I, as I said before, I, I think they're a definite top four chance, and yeah, for sure. will be there competing in the, the the last week of the comp. Yeah, for sure, I agree. Uh, moving on, mate. We we'll, uh, what the one way we like to start the podcast here is we always like to start nice and positive. We're always trying to promote positive things in the game. We like to start off with the grateful. Was anything that you're grateful for today, mate? Uh, always grateful for family. Yeah, I think that's very important for for me. Uh, very important for the people um, that are special in my life. Um, you know. Uh, my mother, my father uh, passed away 10 years ago, uh, but I've got seven sisters. I'm the only boy in the family. Yeah, okay. Uh, and I've got three beautiful kids on my own, married, um, a lovely wife. So family and, 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 yeah, I think family is always important to yeah. everyone as it is. It's pretty common. That's pretty common when people yeah, come yeah. in there. It's, it's one of the gratefuls. Yeah. My grateful, mate, is because I, I do a fair few of these now that I've been doing these podcasts, and it's something that we're going to talk about next. It's grateful for being able to watch – you know, one of the potentially one of the greatest sportsmen of all time. Watching that Super Bowl yesterday, Tom Brady. I know you're a big NFL fan. To see, I start, you know, when I first because I'm a Packers fan, so there's been a, I've hated him for a long time as well. <laughs> but I think you know, seeing his greatness come through over the years and and how well he's been able to maintain it, go to a new team and do what he did yesterday in the Super Bowl. 
mate, uh, what's your thoughts on that? And, and where, did, where did the journey start for you in the NFL? Because I know you've been doing it on Fox and that for years. I remember watching yeah. it. Well, not, was it, I don't know if it was Fox. You were doing a show? Yeah, I, I did years a ago? show on Fox many years ago. Yeah, we yeah. were in 2000, so that's 20 years ago. So yep. it probably started just before I retired. So yep. the late 90s, started to watch a little bit of NFL um, and then started to gradually just follow the elite players in the game. I, I haven't really got a team, to be honest with you. Okay. I, I, I'm just one of these people that love the game, and the more I've watched it and studied it, uh, the more I find it fascinating. Yeah. Um, and I, I just like seeing the superstars play well. The big game players, big yep. name players rise to the occasion, um, and there was none. And there's none better in the game than, than Tom Brady. To yep. see what he did – to be able to win his seventh Super Bowl ring. And just to put that into perspective, um, no other franchise or team has won seven. Yeah, totally. Well, <laughs> and the yeah. most that yeah. anyone's won so he's the Patriots every franchise. six yeah. and, and, and the Steelers and now he's at got six, him. and he's got seven. So there wouldn't be a league player that's won more competitions than South Sydney. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's just remarkable. And then to see what he's able to do at 43 years of age, the Chiefs, I think, were seven and five and – got smashed by the Chiefs in round 12. Yep. And that's when they turned it around. They went on an eight-game winning streak. Yep. They improved as they went. And I was reading an article about how it was an hour phone call between Bruce Arians and the coach and Tom Brady. Um, and they spoke about what they needed to do to improve and they just wanted to simplify their game. And, and the coach said to Tom, just tell me what you don't want and we'll yep. go with what you need and what you're comfortable with. Yep. And then they started to get on a bit of a roll – and to think about what they did and what Brady was able to achieve is, is second to none. They, they, they beat um, Washington. Yep. Then they beat New Orleans, and New Orleans have got a you know, Hall of Famer in Drew Brees. Yep. Then they had to go to Green Bay yep. and take on yeah, Aaron Rodgers. Knock my boys out, yeah. You know. So I was still bitter going into the Super Bowl. Who's, a, who's a Hall of Famer. Yep. Um, and, then, and then they take on this young – Brash, exciting. Well, people were saying young, that he's next. He's the next uh, big thing in the game. And yep. and to see the way they dismantled that Kansas City offense was sensational. They just put plenty of pressure on Mahomes and, you know, he, he missed obviously his offensive linesman. But it was just great to see Tom Brady yep. win another Super Bowl and it just showed you what a great player is able to do and bring people up to his level. Yeah. Well, we are – because we always talk about NFL and, and NBA stuff as well and we, we always – used to put the comparison to the Melbourne Storm and how strict and not strict, but how, how well that culture's run. Yeah. And the same thing with Patriots and there's comparisons to Bellamy and Cam Smith and, and Tom Brady. So we always talk about those comparisons. Eh? And then you, you look at, you know, potentially Cam Smith – Still, still, still available. And if he was to move on and go to another club, could he do the Brady? Like it's a cool thing yeah. to think of. Like oh, it's, it's a cool. If you're thinking thing. about it yeah. as a fan, yeah. And I, I think that's still a possible reality. Yeah, it, I believe so. He hasn't come out, out and said anything and, and, and said you know that he's completely done. No, he's not. He's not retired as such yet. He hasn't made that announcement. But it'd be massive call yeah. to go and play with the Gold Coast Titans. But I've got no doubt if he makes the call and plays for the Titans and they make the finals. They were good towards the back end of last yep. year. They've recruited some uh, young talent um, and to get an experienced bloke like Cam Smith and his leadership that he would bring uh, would be very significant. To that it, it just feels very similar to what you know what was happening at Tampa Bay. You, even the weather and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> like you go from cold in Melbourne and New England and you go to the Tampa Bay, Florida – Gold Coast, it all just like, it makes sense. It lines up. Um, <laughs> and they, they don't really have to do it. Yeah. Because it doesn't, it won't add anything to their, their legacy or diminish their legacy, no yep. matter what happens if they go to that club. But I think if he can go there um, and take this club and elevate them to another level, you just realise then the importance of having that great leader and yeah, sure. realise what a player Cameron Smith has been for this game. Yeah, for sure. Um, all right, mate, uh, moving on to uh, the game uh, that we've got you in here to talk about, uh, the Indigenous game. You've been involved with this now for, since 2011. It was in the All-Stars format when you first started doing it, and it's now transitioned into a really competitive game with the, the Maldives. How, how, from your end, from the Indigenous side, how have you seen it progress um, with accessibility and, and how passionate the players take it and whatnot? Has it always been as strong from 11 as, as it is now? I think it's probably grown, to yep. be fair. Um, I think 
there's certainly more um, importance placed around the game, and there's I'd say there's a bit more passion from from both sides. Yeah. Um, when it was the all stars, the world all stars, I, I I don't know whether they had a real reason why they'd play mm. um, other than just to go out there and play a game of football. Yeah. Whereas the indigenous boys always had something to play for because we yep. were representing our people. Yeah. Uh, now that we're playing the Maori, yeah, it's brought a different. Uh, dimension to it as well because they're so proud and yeah. they've got a wonderful culture. Um, and now with um, you know, the Pacific influence in the NRL, which is significant, yep. um, we're showcasing the talents that they have. And by being back in camp as well, you, you know, you, you get that feel of um, identifying with each other and sharing stories and um, you know, touching on on your um, heritage and, and sharing – uh, what we we know, but also delving a little bit deeper um, yeah. into how you feel about yourself and how you feel about family and and how you feel about making a difference to the to the younger generation. Um, and I think that's so important throughout the week as well. You reconnect, um, and I think uh, the Maoris um, bring that element as well. Um, and to top it off, you play a game of football at the end of the week, and it's passionate. Um, we show that flair. Uh, that both um, sides have and yep. that, that you know ability to play attacking football and, and I think that's what makes it so special. Yeah, for sure. And one thing that stands out for me is watching it the last couple of years is, yeah, yeah there's a passion, but there's so much respect between the two teams. You know, like even from the starts from the anthems and, and the huckers and, and your war dancers, it's one thing that stands out to me is that they're so passionate about beating each other, but also so respectful straight away. I think even Latrell's, you know, done a hungy with yeah. Isaac and that after the games. Like the amount of respect between the two teams is going to be massive. And because my dad also told me that you said potentially you're going to be in camp together up in Townsville. Is that yeah? That's the okay. that's that's the plan. So we'll yep. be seeing a lot of uh, the Maori boys. Um, but I think it's also a greater understanding of. Yeah, you know, what everyone's been through, and yep. and um, you know the, the, the cultural part is is massive um, for us while we're in in camp, and it's a good way for us to share and reconnect stories and, and talk about uh, our country and, and talk about our people, and um, we've got so much respect for yep. other cultures, um, and that's what we want. We want people to respect us. Yep. So if you want people to respect us, you've got to respect others as well. So um, it's just a great. Thing to be able to be a part of. I've been lucky enough to be a part of it for a number of years now, and um, it'll continue to grow. Um, while ever the players want to be involved in it, uh, the people want to support it, um, and that's the thing about taking it to North Queensland. It will be supported. Players want to play. They give their right leg to be a part of it, and that's what creates a, a good game as well. Well, yeah, that's that's one thing I want to touch on is the ac- accessibility of the players for you now these days from both teams. Um, completely both stacked teams. Uh, what's the role of the coaches from the respective teams? Do they communicate with you guys and let you know, all right, so-and-so? I think obviously there's a, a question about Benji further on, but do they – I suppose the big one last year would have been Latrell. Latrell, yeah. you know, was got moved to fullback for you. And, yeah, um, so, we, so what sort of happens is they, they have it online, so the yep. fans actually pick the team. Yep. Uh, and then once that team has been selected, uh, then we uh, notify the players about their inclusion and then they give us a, an indication of whether they're in or out through injury. Yep. Um, I've never had an issue with a club ringing me and telling me about a certain player saying that they can't play. Yep. Um, they sometimes ring and ask whether they could limit the amount of minutes they play because they haven't had the pre-season that they're after and I'm okay with that. Um, but I think if you were to tell a player – um, in, in particular, you know, our team that they, you know, they couldn't play. I think they'd be quite upset about that, mm. and more than likely tell the coach that no, I'm going to play, and this is a game that I want to be a part of, and um, I think you'd see them be a part of it. Yeah, for sure. I think in particular with the success of you know, you guys winning the first year, and then the New Zealand Maori winning last year. It's almost like you know, it feels like a decider sort of feel this year, but it's going to keep going. It's going to keep getting stronger because as long as it's so competitive and we keep getting the best plays, it's almost going to be the perfect way to start a season, isn't it? Yeah, and I think that's so true. I, I think you need your big-name players to put their hand up and, and play. 
Um, and that's what they want to do. They're very, very proud of who they are and what they represent and who they represent. Um, and they do a lot of work in the community during the week, and I think that's the most important thing. And obviously this year is going to be different because of COVID restrictions and yep. the lack of um, you know, access to, 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 to mingle. Um, but we will still do a lot of work where we can and still our focus is on building um, cultural awareness and um, trying to inspire uh, the next generation of uh, Indigenous kids to, to achieve whatever they set their heart on. Um, and, and that's one of the things we always speak about is that regardless of the background, regardless of who you are, where, you, where you're born, how you're brought up, you know, if you're prepared to, to work hard – um, anything's achievable. Yeah. And, and some of our players, you know, have got stories that they share. And for me, that's quite inspirational in itself. And, and it, it's great to see them um, be so honest and uh, welcoming to young people by sharing their stories and, and letting them know that they've always got um, someone to lean on and um, never think that they're, they're second rate, always believe in themselves and you can make a difference. Yeah, that's awesome, mate. And you talked a lot about sharing. Like I mentioned it before. How's it? How is it going to be? Quite weird sharing the camp with the boys. Is it going to be? Is it going to be weird to sort of be together all the time and then have to flick that switch? Do you think as players, or uh, just they're so professional now these days? They yeah. get it because I've never heard of anything like that. You've you've obviously done New South Wales teams yeah, before. Imagine going into nah. camps. I, I couldn't imagine as a player. I yeah. think as a coach, you'd be a bit more relaxed about it. Yeah, because I don't have to go out there. And yeah, 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 and, yeah. And, and and I don't have to run. So as a coach, I'm. Pretty, yeah. I mean, you pre- yep. prefer to be in separate locations, no doubt. But yep. I, I haven't got an issue with it for, for this uh, type of game. Some of the players might, yeah. <laughs> you know. But the boys I, are so close now these well, days. Anyway. I was going to say, I'm not too sure to have yeah, an effect like it would back in I the day. I think it's different. I, I really do because they 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 bond so well, and you see different players <laughs> out with different players from different teams, I, I, and you know they're all got teammates now in other clubs, so. Yeah, uh, uh, you know, former teammates or in, in other clubs. So I, yeah. I don't think it'll make that much of a difference, to be honest with you. I still think once you get to game day, you've got to make sure that you're switched on because you can't be half-hearted. If you're half-hearted, that's yeah, when you're going sure. to get injuries. So I, I, I don't think it's a, a massive issue, no. Yeah. Um, yeah, we talked about a few of the bigger names there before. One guy I wanted to circle out is uh, the young kid, Ruben Cotter, from the North Queensland Cowboys. You've got a a list of star-studded players. He's, he's more of an unknown for us. We're, tell us, do you want a little yeah, bit about him? Yeah, I, I haven't seen a great deal of him, but he's very smart at a dummy half. Yep. Uh, he's got a good um, array of skills, uh, nice and subtle, uh, got a good pass, nice running game. Yep. Um, and he's a guy that, you know, is competing for the number nine shirt up there at the Cowboys. So he's playing at home. He's the yep. only Cowboy player in the world. So I think, I think that here we conditions really keen, wise. Yeah, yep. really keen to, to play well. So... I'm looking forward to getting him into the team. And one thing I've been really proud of over the last couple of years is that we've given guys an opportunity in this game that have been relatively unknown, and all of a sudden uh, they've come out and secured positions in their first uh, grade teams. Um, you know, a couple of years ago we gave Josh Kerr an opportunity, hadn't played first grade before. Yep. Um, Played really well in that game, got a chance, and now part of the was Queensland, part of the squad. Queensland Origin squad. Yep. Um, last year, Jermaine um, Tanur Brown um, been running around in Queensland Cup. Yep. Um, played him in this game, played well, got a contract with the Warriors, and then basically started was a part of their seventeen every week and. You know, he's improved out of sight. So that's the opportunity that it gives some of these young players that haven't been exposed to first grade is they're playing at a higher level than they've played at before. They're playing with greats and they're playing with very talented people. So if they can really play well in a game like this and they're an unknown, all of a sudden their light, their, 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 their star is, is out there um, and, and people sort of look at them a little bit differently because they know they can play well against the higher quality of player. Yeah, for sure. One, one of my next points was talk, going to talk about uh, Brendan Smith, the Cheese's performance last year. I thought that really set up his year to then going on. He'd been – like, he's obviously played for the Kiwis before, so everyone knew who Brendan Smith was. Yeah. But his performance in particular and how, you know, 
playing through that broken cheekbone and, and scoring the two yeah. tries to – that was an unbelievable performance. And, then you know, I thought, like I said, it really set him up well for the year. Yeah, he was dominant in that game. And I, I asked a couple of boys about – I said he must be strong to tackle. And they yeah. said, mate, you've got no idea. Mm. You've got no idea when he – Puts his head down, he picks it up. He, he knows he's running. He's not like a Cameron Smith who picks it up and sort of looks to play with someone over the advantage line and then takes yeah. off. He's, he's waiting to get a read he, almost yeah, sometimes. He's waiting for it to be a fast play the ball and go. Yep. Or, or getting it over the advantage line if he's playing on the, the back row and he's got good leg speed. And because he can get low to the ground and he leads, you know, can lead with his head as well, they just say he's just such a hard person to tackle. And the other thing is, even if you get him, he's got a fast play the ball, so yeah. the next person coming off the back of him uh, is so good. But he can play, and he's equally effective as a hooker or a back rower. Yeah. Uh, that's the uh, – I, I think he he's probably, become a victim of his versatility. Yeah, that's, that's what I was about to say. I, I think the fact that he plays so well as a 13 probably hinders his chances sometimes of playing as a nine because yeah. people go, well, that's the way that the game is going. You know, They have that fast 13 with good leg speed because the game is all – um, about that speed now and endurance because yep. it's a non-stop contest, you know, with all the stoppages that they're taking out of play, um, you know, limited amount of scrums, all that type of stuff, no penalties, six to go if you stand in front of the referee, you're offside. Um, so the game will be a lot faster. So yeah, I- that, that type of player, uh, you won't have to be big. I think you'll be mobile yep. and you need good foot. Foot, uh, you know, foot speed. Yeah, I agree, mate. I think, you know, some of the teams in particular that did really well at the end of the year and then even flowing into Origin, remember when one of your players, Cody Walker, come on and played that roving middle role? Yeah. You know, Cheese, like you said, did it. I think when Penrith started to come back, they brought Tyron May from the centres and put him into the middle of the yeah. field. So all those sorts of ball-playing, fast, mobile middles, I think that's going to be massive in this year for yeah. sure. and I think – if you look at it too, like when Victor Radley went down yep. for the Roosters, they really missed him. Um, just his ability to play with the ball. He's got good leg speed. Obviously, his defensive capabilities are very yep. good as well. But I think that's the way you'll see the 13 role evolve. I, I think you'll have you know guys with fast feet um, looking to take advantage of any quick play the ball, playing right over the advantage line um, and, and trying to get that opposition f- forward pack and middles just – Continually on the back foot. Yeah, totally agree. Um, we just we got uh, we did a little Q and A today on the YKTR Sports. You said you're not up to standards with the Instagram yet. You're still yeah. figuring it out. The last couple of years, but we chucked a couple of questions out. Um, this was a pretty good one, I thought, yeah. mate. He, um, would you ever consider having uh, the player of the tournament, like a young sort of player, as almost like a celebrity player, or even you know getting the chance to bring him into camp or something like that? That that that's a question for both the Koori and the Mouldy Knockout. So. I think uh, over in New Zealand it's called the Nahui Far Tournament. Yep. Um, you know, you've got the Curry or Murray. Uh, yep. they, they have the Murray, Knockout, Murray, yep. Murray Knockouts uh, as well. Uh, it's uh, quite a cool idea, isn't it? It, it's, it is. I, I, to be perfectly honest, I haven't thought about it before. Yep. Yep. Um, but it makes sense. Um, it, it makes sense to have someone involved. Yeah. Um, I think that even if you had him as the 20th player or you had him in camp as a development type yep. player, I, I think there could be a role. Uh, for that, obviously you have to be careful because you want to make sure that their fitness levels are yeah. are very good. Because the last thing you need is to be throwing someone out there that wasn't fit and strong um, that couldn't compete, and you'd put him at risk of. Because there are a few of those at those tournaments, mate. I've been I've played in a few of those multi tournaments, and um, yeah. when you when you come back as an NRL player, mate, there's yeah, there's, there's none around the leagues. <laughs> So they're all big boys, so I can understand. Yeah, you, nah, you, so, you, so you'd have to be careful, but I yeah. think if there was a young in particular, a youngish player yeah. um, that maybe has been in and around the system, that is still might be in twenties or something yeah, like that. Yeah, got a got a still a bright future in front of him. I, I think that'd be well worth looking at. Yeah, for sure. Um, another question is that there's the the three games so far have been in Australia. Has there been any talk of taking them back to New Zealand? And do you uh, think do you do you think there's a massive advantage in? And being able to play the three games in Australia so far, yeah. Well, I think there has been. Obviously, mm. yeah, predominantly, um, you know, we get all the all the support. Although um, last year there was a lot of uh, yeah. Marys, yeah, <laughs> Marys support yeah. up on the goal. There's heaps in the goal. You, you probably yeah. had more than than us to be fair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, I th- I think there'd be good value in taking it over uh, to New Zealand at some stage. Um, I think that uh, what you've been able to add to the game uh, is something that. 
uh, people want to see, and that's a, that's a good contest. And two quality teams, two passionate teams, uh, doing great work in the community and then coming together to play a game at the end of the week. And it's a great way to celebrate um, our culture, but it's also a great way of celebrating um, all the talent that we, we do have uh, in, in this wonderful game. So I think it would definitely be on the agenda. Um, and I think it's something that will probably happen sooner rather than later. Yeah, for sure. I think they'd really embrace it, like even not more so than, than the Kiwis, mm. but because it's, you know, if it was a, you know, once in every two or three years we get the opportunity to have it, I think New Zealand would embrace it and it would be massive over there. So, um, And one person that I'd love to see over there is, is Benji Marshall, mate. He's he secured a contract with the Rabbitohs at the last minute and then been able to play in this game. What's your ex- expectations for how they use Benji in limited um, time and, you know, what are you expecting from yeah, obviously Benji, the old trickster? Uh, obviously he won't be um, as fit as he'd, he'd like to be, even though he's been training on his own, no doubt. Um, but, you know, when you're training on your own, to, training as a club, you, you're not training as hard. So uh, he'll be a little bit down on fitness-wise, but he's only going to play you know, maximum half a game. Mm. Uh, the thing I've always found with Benji, always found with these type of games or – Origins. It doesn't matter how much game time you've had in the lead up. Once you get out there, the adrenaline is flowing, and you rise to the occasion. Yep. And that's what great players do. And, and Benji's proven himself time and time again. So he'll come up with his magic plays. Uh, we're going to obviously limit the amount of plays that he, he comes up with. Uh, but he's been a wonderful player. He's been a wonderful uh, role model, and he's inspired a, a lot of kids to go and play the game. And I think that's great. And I think when a guy like Benji puts his name to something like this and wants to be a part of it at the end of his career, yeah, um, it says a lot about special. the game, doesn't it? Yeah, I think it's very. I, special. I couldn't believe he. I don't. He hadn't played before, has he? He hasn't played. Never played for the New Zealand. Not that I'm before. aware. Yeah, so, aware yeah. of. So, yeah. um, I was quite surprised by that. So, yeah. like you said, it, it does say a lot about how how far the games come. You've, some of the plays you've had. I remember early on, you're getting JT in that to to play in those games. So yeah, and we had GI and yeah. when, when the biggest names of the game are saying, "Hey, I want to be a part of this." Yeah. Um, and you, and you can't leave me out, yeah. uh, that says a lot about what you're putting on. And, yeah. and, the, and, the, and the fans see it as well. Yeah, for sure. You know, yeah, they, yeah, it makes a big difference for the fans buying in when they, yep. you get the uh, calibre of player like Benji. Uh, the last one, mate, we, we touched on a little bit of uh, NFL before. The, now, now the next thing coming up is the NFL draft. One of the questions was, if you were doing an NRL draft from scratch and you were picking number one, who would you pick? Ah, gee, that's a tough question. Good question. Um, if st- if Cameron Smith was still playing, yeah, I, 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 still I, just still, trying to win the I'd one, still build a team around yeah. him. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, so I'll put him out of the equation for a second. There's probably two that stand to mind. Um, James Tedesco. Yeah. I still think he's the most brilliant uh, of player. And he was a bit banged up at dominant, the end of last yeah, year. I think you he looked tell. a bit tired. Yeah, so all the Roosters did. Um, so he'd had a big couple of back-to-back years. But I think you know, the fact that he can freshen up and come back and he'll probably be the leader of that Roosters team without yep. Boyd Cordner, I think the leadership will suit him. So he'd be one guy. And the other one was Cameron Munster. So after seeing what he did in Origin 3, that was a very special yeah. performance, one of the better. We love Cam Munster here. He comes yeah. on a fair bit oh, and does, does a he? show with yeah, us. So yeah. um, we, we sort of copied a show from the States where the – um, Aaron Rodgers calls in yep. every, every week, and we we sort of do a a show with the uh, yep. Cam Munster. We call him the Prez. He's oh, our right. he's yeah, our yeah, Prez. Yeah, so. yeah no, mate, well, he'll be loving that. There you go, Prez. <laughs> well, he's <laughs> he, he was a he was just dominant. It was um, you know you, you don't see too many players dominate a game like that at Origin, and yeah, you know, when you got the best players playing, you know you'll you'll see a player play well and a couple of players, but you don't see a dominant performance. That was a Dominant display. I think it says a lot about how they performed in game two. Obviously, you know, playing five, five out, five out yourself mm. and coaching, you lose your six. But they also had cover on the bench too. They had Benny Hunt, but they just sort of couldn't get it together without him out on the field. And then the difference between the efforts in game one and three, and then missing him in game two, I think says a lot about him as well. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. You, you, you look and you, you look at game one. You know, they were a little bit quiet and off their game. And New South Wales were the dominant team in the opening forty minutes, and probably should have been further in front, but. Queensland were behind, but they weren't out of it. No. And then Munster and Cherry Evans just kept on competing. Just kept on having a crack, having a crack, and, and it turned for them. Um, and, and I like players like that, I, you know. And, and I also like players that don't only do it at um, uh, Origin, the elite level, yeah. but they do it at club land yeah, as yeah, well, yeah. you know, and, and vice versa. You, you don't want that bloke that, you know, 
waddles around in club football and then Wads. plays well in, in origin all I'm, the time and you go, well, why don't you do that for my club? But yeah. the guys that – and this is why I love guys like Smith and Thurston and yeah. Joey Johns and all those guys where they did it consistently at club land and consistently at the highest level. Yeah, I always noticed, um, and you can obviously speak on this as well, playing that some of the boys always struggled after Origin, especially yeah. after that game three. Uh, if it was if, if it was a tied series, or if the game if the series was won, that coming back to club level yeah. for that first two or three weeks is you know you got all that adrenaline and yeah. and th- that you're exactly right, yeah. mate. No team does it better than Melbourne, no. Cam Smith, and no, I, I think Billy done, Slater Cooper. Done it really well, and you owe it to your teammates to go back there and put in the same amount of effort because. At the end of the day, they're the ones that get you to where you need to go. Yeah. And they help you play State of Origin. They help you play for Australia because without them, you wouldn't. So there's that respect there of, yes, you've helped me, but now I want to help you. Yeah. And I think that that's what all the good players do. And, and the sign of a good Origin player for mine is that they do it consistently no matter what level they're playing at. Yeah. For sure. All right, and, uh, we'll finish up with that, Laurie. Thanks for coming in, mate. Appreciate you. Good luck. Nah. Next weekend? Do you mean that? Uh, well, because Kitty, <laughs> Honestly. Because Kitty pulled out last minute on our podcast today, yeah, I think I do. Man. No, no. Your dad uh, will kill you. Yeah, dad, dad will kill me. But, uh, yeah, mate, all the best. Like I said, there's a lot of respect between the two yeah. cultures and uh, appreciate you coming on. Cheers, Justin. Thanks, Thanks mate. mate.